Good happy Sunday. It is Sunday, September 8, 2024. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this Sunday morning edition of WRMK News 12. We have a lot of news to get to on this Sunday morning, so let's get started right now. First up, Liberty House collects canned goods for local veterans in need. Generous Granite Staters helped cram the van on Saturday to help local veterans in need. Liberty House hosted a food drive at the Hannaford on John Levin Drive in Manchester. The organization supports local veterans facing food insecure or who are struggling to afford essentials. Our pantry serves about 200 veterans every month from all over the community and our pantry has been very low these last two months, said Ashley Kitchell of Liberty House. The organization also accepts cash donations online, or you can call 603-669-0761. Candidates for Governor Chris Cross State looking for the final vote. Let's take a listen to that report from WMUR News 9. Boom. Today, not tomorrow, not next week. Today is the day I hope you will donate to... The last-minute campaign sprint is on, with five candidates for governor crisscrossing the Granite State, from bakeries to the beachfront, trying to win over undecided voters ahead of Tuesday's primary. <laughs> Joyce Craig serving up cold beers at Hampton Beach. The former Manchester mayor joined by Massachusetts Governor Maura Healey. I know what's happening at the local level and how the state should be better supporting our towns and our cities. As a governor, I know that Joyce is the one with the experience, with the leadership ability. In Plastow, fellow Democrat John Kuyper introducing himself to local voters. He's trying to mobilize support through social media. Because we don't have a million dollars to hire people to knock doors or make phone calls for us. So what we're really trying to do is to get people out there to be texting their friends, text your mom. Cindy Warmington shaking hands in Durham, saying she's looking to build momentum off this week's Granite State debate. I think I really showed the kind of leadership that I bring to the race and that I am the person who can stand on that debate stage and take on Kelly Ayotte. Meanwhile, for the Republicans, former State Senate President Chuck Morse started his day in Bedford working to sway voters over a cup of coffee. It's like the last year in a half. We're on the campaign trail going everywhere, talking to people. It's very exciting right now. You can see the people are moving to us. And back on the seacoast, Republican Kelly Ayotte also taking a shift behind the bar, heading into the home stretch of the election. I'm going to fight hard to make sure that this state stays on a strong path uh, that Governor Sununu has had us on. I'm proud to have his endorsement, uh, but also to take on the challenges we have. Ayotte and Craig are heading into the primaries with a fundraising and polling advantage, but come Tuesday, it will be up to the voters to pick the nominees. Ross Ketchley, WMUR, News 9. Okay, and there you go on that report. SUV crashes into closed restaurant in Nashua. No injuries were, were reported after a large SUV crashed into a closed restaurant in Nashua on Saturday. According to the Nashua Fire Rescue, the crash happened around 12.45 p.m. at 303 Main Street, which is a former Poor Piers restaurant. Firefighters stabilized the building and notified city building inspectors to evaluate the structure. The Nashua Police Department is investigating the cause of the crash. 
man charged after a deadly shooting in Guilford, police say. Let's take a listen to that report from WMUR News 9. At 9.46 p.m., the PD received a 911 call advising that there was a male uh, suffering from a single gunshot wound. Captain Dustin Parrott with the Guilford Police Department says emergency crews responded to 28 Timber Lane Friday night. They found one man dead inside the home when they arrived. We aren't IDing the victim at this time. We're going to wait for the autopsy to come back. Parrott says the initial call indicated the incident may have been an accident among family members. The call for service came in that it was accidental. Uh, and that the two brothers were involved in it, and that's what prompted our investigation. Police say two brothers lived together at that residence on Timber Lane. One of those brothers is now deceased. The other brother, 45-year-old Brian Harvath, is in custody, facing felony charges related to the shooting. The manslaughter and the reckless conduct of the firearm are the charges that we have right now. Parent says the investigation is still ongoing and the charges could change. For now, Harvath is being held at the Belknap County Jail. The AG's office was called, however, it didn't meet the purview for them because the case at the time looked like it was going to be either negligent or reckless. Uh, so the county attorney is the one that ultimately has this case. Officials say Harvath's arraignment is set to take place on Monday at the circuit court in Laconia. In Guilford, Isabel Litters, WMUR News 9. When you have these woke revolutions, it requires all of us at some point to say, no, not going to do this. Okay, and there you go on that report. Former First Lady of New Hampshire, Nancy Sununu, mother of Governor Chris Sununu, dies at 85. Let's take a listen to that report from WMUR News 9. Former New Hampshire First Lady Nancy Sununu has passed away. She was the wife of former Governor John H. Sununu and mother of Chris and John E. Sununu. Nancy Sununu was also active in Republican politics herself. We are hearing from lawmakers tonight to Senate President Jeb Bradley writing in part, quote, New Hampshire has lost a great leader. Nancy Sununu served the Granite State as First Lady and Chair of the New Hampshire Republican Party and instilled that love and dedication for our state in her eight children. She will be dearly missed. We also spoke with State Senator Lou D'Alessandro today. It was very easy to work with her. You could, you could talk with her uh, and she was... Uh, smiling all the time and, and very very friendly you know made you feel warm and fuzzy which is kind of kind of important in, in this life particularly in the life of politics in a social media post a governor sununu said she passed away after a long battle with alzheimer's nancy sununu was 85 years old okay and there you go on that report our thoughts and prayers go to the sununu family Chewbacca, Dover celebrates beginning of the birthplace of the Teenage Manton Ninja Turtles. As the Teenage Manton Ninja Turtles grew up to become a pop culture sensation, the place where they were convinced really got mentioned. It wasn't the New York City sewers where the turtles muted from regular reptiles into crime-fighting turtles who battled foe with nunchucks, snark, the, and pizza. Rather, it was a small city near the New Hampshire coast. A new exhibit hopes to put the, that community, Dover, New Hampshire, at the center of the turtle's story and in turn attract turtle-obsessed fans or anyone else who grew up reading the comics and watching Ninja Turtle movies and TV shows. At one point, 
in the 1980s, the frenzy around the turtles were called Turtle Mania. It's the birthplace, said Kevin Eastman, who, along with Peter Lared, created the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 41 years ago when the two shared a house in Dover, New Hampshire. The first issue went on sale a year later. That's where the turtles were created. It is very historical and very important to us. The turtle exhibit opened last month at the Woodman Museum, which houses an electronic collection that includes a stuffed polar bear and Victoria's funeral exhibit reptile with a horse drawn here with its explosion of colors in cabinets full of action figures. The exhibit aims to be the place to go for all things turtles. It starts with a franchise humbled beginning in Dover, where the duo formed a play on the fact they were creating the first comic in their living room, rather than an actual studio inspired by Eastman's fictitious with turtles in mutual arts. They came up with the crime-fighting turtles and self-published their first comic in black and white. Very cool indeed, right in Dover, New Hampshire. Multiple people shot in Kentucky, police say. Let's take a listen to that report from ABC News. We are following reports of an active shooting situation. This is along I-75 south of Lexington, Kentucky. Police have shut down Interstate 75 near London, Kentucky, and say that numerous people have been shot. But we do not have details at this time on the number of victims or even their condition. The suspect has not been captured either. However, police have just released this photo of a person of interest, their words, identified as 32-year-old Joseph Couch. Police describing Couch as armed and dangerous and are urging residents to stay inside, avoid the area, and certainly do not approach Couch if you see him. We also have these images of traffic stopped right along the interstate. The driver who shared them with us says he was driving back from a family reunion and saw a state police cruiser speeding by him and then traffic was stopped. Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir said in a statement posted on X that the highway was closed in both directions at exit 49, if you're familiar with that area. He says he's monitoring the situation. The Louisville Office of the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives is assisting the state police with the investigation. That is the very latest that we have. We will have much more on the shooting right here on ABC News. And Okay, and there you go on that report. We're going to switch gears now. Let's go into your weather. Meteorologist Riley King, and welcome to this edition of Riley's Kingdom of Weather. Let's get started right now. Here's a look at your radar on this Sunday morning. As you can see, it's nice and clear on radar. Your weather for today, sunny to partly cloudy, high 68 winds west at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Tonight, clear sky, low 49 winds west southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And tonight,
tomorrow expect for a few afternoon clouds, mainly sunny, high 74, winds west at 10 to 15 miles per hour. It's currently sunny and 51 degrees right now. That does it for this edition of Riley's Kingdom of Weather. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Have a great sun. Good morning, everyone. I'm me. Okay, and there you go on your weather. That does it for this Sunday morning edition of WRMK News 12. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Have a great rest of your Sunday and see you back here later on today for another newscast. Goodbye.